and welcome to Arabesque. This week we are in West London and the Royal Court Theatre. We have come to check out the play by Palestinian playwright Dalia Taha, Fireworks. Can I do things after I've thrown them out of the window? No, I'll kill you. Go ahead, kill me. Leave me in peace. I won't kill you. I will throw you out of the window. You're a failure. I'll turn you into a cripple. You will have to beg me to take you to the toilet. A failure. And I won't take you. I won't take you to the toilet. I'll leave you to fill the whole house with piss. The whole house apart from my room. I'm the international associate and um, we have an international department at the Royal Court. We're really unique um, in terms of theatres around the world that have a department dedicated to just developing and producing new international writers. We develop new sort of emerging voices um, and go into countries perhaps where, play, where the playwright isn't at the centre of the creative process and help develop young voices and of course most importantly try and get that work back on in London so that London audiences have access to these stories which otherwise would go untold and an audience here wouldn't have access to. Dahlia applied to one of our programmes um, where writers from all over the world can apply to come and work with us over the summer um, on a residency um, and Dahlia's play that she submitted to that was the original firework. Who told you to use TCP? I thought it was a cart. Half the bottle is gone. I thought I had a cart. My trousers were covered in blood. You can't put TCP on it. Oh my cart, I always use TCP. Why is it coming so early? Isn't that right? Don't I put TCP on carts? There's... Uh, I mean, uh, down there. Just don't put... We really are so different. The story of families living through an occupation, through a war, and their instinctive need to um, protect their children and the impossibility of that when they had no agency, had no power in their situation, they couldn't control anything that was happening to them. Um, and that story has sort of stayed the same really, although the play has developed and matured and turned into the sort of beautiful piece that it, that it is now. We started working on this play two years ago with Dahlia and it goes on such a long journey that it sort of creeps into every pore of your being. And very luckily we we're able to also travel to those countries. So in the last year I've been able to go to Palestine twice. Um, and the people that you meet, the stories you hear, the create, other creative artists that you work with, it all starts to build up a mosaic, a picture of experience that you then put back into the play and the production. And I think almost on an atomic level <laughs> you're different but also just politically emotionally I think working on a play in this depth and from somewhere as extraordinary as Palestine and by a writer as, as interesting and um, poetic as Dahlia is you're totally transformed by it. For me it's a sort of basic way of storytelling and if we're only telling each other stories about the world that we already inhabit and we already know I think our lives are going to be much poorer for that. So I think it's so crucial that our audiences have access to stories that you don't, so you don't just see the news reports. You know, I think Palestine's very interesting. It's sort of, um, it's weighted down um, under the sort of news coverage, but actually it's very hard for a London audience to see real stories about the sort of human element and the human cost of living in such a situation. And that's what this place strives to do and um, all our work really has that human element at its core. We play husband and wife. Husband and wife. Lovers. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Um, I suppose we're, we're, we're under the occupation, we're sort of dealing with, uh, we have one child, a son. You meet us first sort of at, slightly at odds, not slightly, probably more than slightly at odds in terms of how we're bringing up the child, in terms of the protection and, and 
um, of him and um, his environment. And, um, and our relationship sort of develops um, from there. I, th I think one of the things that I really like about their relationship is it's a loving relationship in the sense that they're, you really get the, uh, I certainly get the impression they're very much an everyday parent. They're facing everyday parenting problems. But, you know, under pressure, obviously, you've got the kind of pressure cooker of what's going on, which is never really, it, not all the time explicitly spoken about. They're, they're getting on with their lives, and I thought that was really wonderful. For me, um, what I find so brilliant and so brilliant about Dali's writing in it is that it's, um, it's yes, it's set in Palestine, and and yes, that that's the sort of outside world. But actually, it's <clears throat> it's not about that. It's about it's about families, and it's about how how relationships survive under that kind of pressure. And in this circumstance, it's under uh, not under occupation, but it's it's sort of quite a universal um, universal thing that I think that audiences come, and I feel like they they can connect to it on a on a more human level. Those words are so loaded when you hear Israel, or Palestine, or you know, immediately we kind of start forming opinions. Whereas in this, you really just meet the people, and specifically the kids. You meet the kids, and you meet the kids playing, and you meet the kids playing games, and just tr just trying to be kids, and parents trying to be parents, and husband and wives trying to be husbands and wives to each other. And I think you know, kind of dealing with the ordinary, everyday, mundane stuff that people have to deal with under those circumstances, of course, becomes that there's, there's a kind of conflict there in that respect and a tension there, which I think really serves the play well. Um, but certainly for me, what really drew me to it is the human element of it. It's, it, it can be anywhere. A, you know, a group of people under pressure, this is what, you know, and they still got to get on with raising a child and, you know, going, you know, going about their daily lives. You can't avoid the politics, but it's not a directly political piece, it's about human relationships and and I, because of that there's less, for me it feels like there's less distance so yeah, it sort of draws right. an audience in and I think that's what we would hope for an audience coming to see it is that they're not distant, distanced because of the politics, they're actually drawn in because of the relationships because they're human relationships. I couldn't have answered that better, that's brilliant, absolutely. Let's make it like it was. What? His room. Let's put all his things back in it. We don't have them anymore. We do. They're all in the storeroom. Didn't you give them to charity? I lied. I didn't give anything away. Don't you dare come near my room, you understand? Don't you dare. I'm going to make it like Don't it you was. dare go in for that. I need to give people their things back. I've nearly finished fixing them. The things they haven't asked you for for months. They are not in a rush. We are married. The theater is our, the one who married us. <laughs> and this is the first time in the Royal Court's history that a Palestinian writer has been put on. They've reacted very differently to the loss of their son. Um, so I won't speak for, for Saleh's character, but certainly for my character, she's absolutely um, embedded in, in her grief and it's taken over her life and it's, and it's, and, and it's sort of stopped her from engaging with um, her immediate circumstances, her husband and her, and her daughter. What you lying to me? Lying to you? I don't believe God could come out of me without me being ill. Ask your friends. Why didn't you tell me before? Why would I tell you before? So I could prepare myself, so I could know. It doesn't matter now. What about being at school? Today's Tuesday. I'm supposed to be in English now. And the teacher always gets me to come up the board. She gives me to ask a question because I always get it wrong. Imagine if I was standing at the board in front of the whole class, covered in blood. Your answers are always wrong. You should have told me before. Carry on like this, you'll be out of school in a couple of years. That'd be a good thing. I hate you. When you say there's a curtains between you and the world, mm -hmm. and this is the grief is also Khaled is like that, but in in the opposite side, you but he is grieving, he's closing himself in his home, which means dedicating his life to his family after losing his son. So this is the way he is grieving. 
or trying to he is trying to come back to the family he is he is feeling maybe he is feeling guilty not to be there not to be there enough so that's why he lost the child that's why he so he's like there until the end all the time our characters in this play are dealing with that as well as the fact that we are so to speak under siege so under those specific circumstances you know what does that mean does the fact that you can't leave the house and could die any second does that help you deal with it because you're in a state of emergency and you have to think about protecting your family or does it bury you deeper into it? I think the main thing to say is that the death of a child is incomprehensible no matter what the circumstances. He wasn't born at seven months. He was born at seven months. You think you know my body better than me? I can remember. Nine, exactly nine months. Because you didn't let me close to you for seven months. You're filthy. You're filthy. I'm talking about our son. Our son was martyred and all you can think about is filth. You couldn't even leave his room alone. Shut up. You think if you take a room and put some radios in it, you turn into an engineer? I'm an electrician. I'm not an engineer. The neighbors give you things they don't want because they feel sorry for you. You've never fixed anything. Have they ever come back and asked you about their things? They know they need some work. They can't be so just like that. You think anyone really believes you to work as an engineer? Electrician! First time I work in London, and I like, I like working here. It's uh, especially in this place. People here are very nice, uh, very professional, very, very eager to know, and passionate about theater. Everybody, I mean everybody, I met here in this place, and it's very, very interesting to be here for me. It's, yeah, it's uh, a rich uh, ex ex experience. If we leave a trace in, in people, that's, that's good. To leave a trace, to leave something out of the stories we are telling. We are not going to change the world out of this. Yeah, I hope I could change the world with, with fireworks, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. Yeah. Some people are changed, and a bit by bit, shway shway. We say in Arabic. Yeah, you cannot jump the ladder from the beginning till the end in one step. And we are patient, I believe. No? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>